Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be run through a shoulder ultrasound by the one and only Linda. I actually wanted to call this episode, but it's not my shoulder that hurts, it's my arm. But I wasn't allowed, so we can't call it that. We'll start looking at the biceps. Stop. Did I embarrass you? No? Embarrass myself. Okay. shoulder now and when I get a shoulder patient I always inquire about whether they've injured their shoulder or not. So Ms X have you injured your shoulder or have you just had some pain sort of sneak up on you lately? Do you do a lot of exercise like do you go to the gym and do a lot of weights or anything yeah. like that? Is there any particular movement that actually aggravates your shoulder more? Generally, it's with this movement, anything up above the head. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at your shoulder with ultrasound. So as opposed to x-rays, it shows the joint space and the bony margins. I'm going to use sound waves to look at the tendons and the overlying bursa of your shoulder, okay? We'll start by just having your hand nice and relaxed on your lap and we start with the biceps tendon. I always have a look at the biceps tendon in transverse first. Have a look to make sure that that biceps tendon is sitting nicely in the bicipital groove and you work your way down the shoulder seeing whether the biceps is surrounded by fluid or not. So once you've had a look in transverse you spin around into longitudinal. So the longitudinal position is where you see the beautiful fibula part of the tendon. So you have to do what we call heel toe, which means you just give a little bit more pressure to the transducer so that you can actually see the fibres of the tendon. Once we've done the biceps tendon, we'll do the sub-step. So when I do the subscap, I sometimes get the patient to rest their arm on a little sponge because if you've got a short, a short shoulder, <laughs> if you've got a sore shoulder, it's quite difficult to have your arm suspended in midair. So this is just a little Linda tip. I always like just to have the coracoid at the medial part of the substap as a landmark. Landmarks are important in ultrasound so that other sonographers and radiologists can review your images and know what position you are actually in if you've neglected to annotate correctly. And then you work your way out to the lateral part of the subscap. And it's important to remember that you've got to examine the whole of the subscap. Then I look at the, the subscap in transverse and I start at the coracoid and work my way out laterally. And of course, if you've seen what you think is a tear, you get a different angle of it. You're going to have a look at the subscap moving. to keep your elbow where it is and take your arm into your body and out again. Just a nice slow gentle movement in and out. This just allows us to check that the biceps tendon stays in the biceps groove and doesn't locate out of it and also allows you to see if there's any bunching of the bursa under the CA ligament. Once the patient's in that position you can easily swing around and just get a nice CA ligament view. Just relax your arm now. Just going to get you to turn around and face the wall over there. that position more uncomfortable than the other? <laughs> I always start in transverse when I'm doing my supraspinatus and that's mainly so that I can see the landmark of the biceps easily. Remember it's a curved joint so you're looking at a curved tendon. And once more, make sure you come all the way out to the insertion because it's that insertion where you will see the enthesiopathy and insertional tears are very common. Uh, 
And I start by finding the biceps tendon in long. Anything behind that biceps tendon has got to be supraspinatus. So we're now just coming up. And this is the anterior part. And again, increment by increment to see that tendon. And when you get to the mid part of the tendon, you should be having the landmark of the acromion at the edge of the screen. That allows you to assess whether the tendon's thick, and whether you think it's going to impinge when you abduct the arm. By placing the patient's arm behind their back, you will open up the tendon. And if there's a tear there, very often, you will get fluid coming into the tear. So it will show you the tear with a lot more accuracy. I'm going to have a little bit of a look at abduction now. So in a moment I'm just going to get you to lift your arm out to the side and if it starts to hurt I just need you to let me know. So I always just get the patient to move their arm backwards a little bit. I align the transducer up so I can see the acromion on the edge again. And then I'm just going to get you to slowly lift your arm up. And if it hurts or catches or gives you any grief, just let me know. Then I'll just go around and I'll just have a look at their AC joint. And you always ask whether they're sore on the AC joint because it's quite a common area for tenderness. What I'm going to get you to do in a moment is take your right hand over and put it on your left shoulder. You watch what the AC joint does, just in case there's some laxity in the joint. Just relax your arm. I'm just going to get you now to pop this hand over on your other elbow. And if you just gently turn your whole body that way. So if you remember your anatomy, your supraspinatus morphs into your infraspinatus. So the supraspinatus looks like a, duck, a um, bird's beak. I nearly said duck's beak. I meant bird's beak. And then as you move backwards, the infraspinatus actually looks like an eagle's beak. So I examine the infraspinatus. You don't often see anything in the infraspinatus. Then you just come around to the back of the shoulder again, and we're just going to have a little look at the posterior labrum. I'm just going to get you to move your arm backwards and forwards on the front again. If you're suspicious that there might be a frozen shoulder, this movement is an excellent one to see cartilage moving nicely. And then I just move down a little bit. If you're gonna look at the teres, remember it is quite a long way back. A lot of people mistake the infraspinatus and call it the teres. And that's the end of a shoulder examination. <laughs> you do the selfie. I'm gonna turn it off. She puts it too close to me. Take 448. <laughs> Alrighty, that's all for yeah, another episode, Shoulder Basics 101. <laughs> uh, leave any comments, suggestions or questions below and we'll get back to you. Yeah, nothing nasty though. Mm -mm. So in the meantime, cheers to sonography. No. Raise your probes to sonography. <laughs> what are we saying? And in the meantime, raise your probes and cheers to sonography. Thanks guys, see you next time, bye. There is a little subscribe button down there and apparently if you push it, you make sure you don't miss out on the next episode. And nothing costs you anything, apparently. Oh, I thought it did, but it doesn't. <laughs> okay, see ya. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.